Here we have a word problem, linear programming problem to solve. So I'll give you a minute to pause and read the problem. And then when you come back, we'll get started. Okay, thanks for reading the problem. You can see that I've constructed a table here based on the information given in the problem with the availability or your limitations or constraints always being your rightmost column of your table. So we have hockey and soccer games, which I'm probably going to refer to as X and Y. So let X be the number of hockey games and Y be the number of soccer games produced. And it says in the problem that we have two labor hours of assembly and two labor hours of testing for the hockey games. And then the soccer games require three labor hours of assembly and one labor hour of testing. And they also only have 60 available labor hours per day for assembly and 40 labor hours per day for testing. So the first thing we need to ask after we construct our table is what is the objective function? Well, I have underlined here that we want to maximize the total daily output. So that means we want to maximize, and I'm going to call it P. I always refer to maximization problems with a P equal to the number of hockey games plus the number of soccer games, or x plus y. Do we have to define any variables? I already talked about that. Yes, x is the number of hockey games, and y is the number of soccer games. But in case your professor requires you to write this, we'll take a quick moment to jot that down. Okay, now I need to put together the objective function and the constraints that I have. So we already know that we want to maximize our total daily output P, which is equal to X plus Y, and that's going to be subject to the constraints formulated in this table. So we slap X's next to the first column numbers, Y next to the second column numbers, and less than or equal to's before the right hand column. So the first constraint is 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 60. The second constraint is 2x plus y is less than or equal to 40. You should always remember your non-negativity constraints in linear programming problems. So the number of hockey games and the number of soccer games produced cannot be negative. You could produce zero of one or the other, but you can't produce a negative amount. So in order to graph the constraints in this problem, we're first going to need to solve those for y. So the first one, let me do this over here, 2x plus 3y less than or equal to 60. We need to subtract 2x from both sides. 3y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 60. And then divide all the pieces by 3. And I'm going to do these in different colors. So we get y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 20. And then I'll do the second one down here. 2x plus y is less than or equal to 40, and all we have to do there is subtract 2x from both sides, and we get y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 40. Okay, so this one has kind of a high y-intercept, so based on the size of my graph, let's see what I can do. I think I'm going to have to go increments of 5. So I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And I'll do the same on the horizontal or x-axis. 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, to graph the first inequality, y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 20. I know I have a y-intercept of 20. But now because I tweaked or distorted the scale, these squares don't represent one unit anymore, 
I might want to find the x-intercept of this line. So to find the x-intercept, that would require me plugging in y equals 0. So that would be 2x plus 3 times 0 is less than or equal to 60. So I could just cover up that y piece. Let me try this one. I get 2x is less than or equal to 60. So I divide both sides by 2 and I get x equals 30. So that means the point 30, 0 has to be the x-intercept of this first line. So, connect my x and y intercepts, and I'm going to label the line y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 20, and I'm going to plug my test point into here. So, 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 less than or equal to 60. Yes, yeah, 0 is less than or equal to 60 is true beneath the line. Therefore, I'm going to cross out or shade points above the line. So, I'm already restricted to this small little triangle here. Now, to work on the second inequality, y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 40, start with my y-intercept, which is the point 0, 040. That's no problem, but then I'm going to need to do a little bit of work to find the x-intercept. Once again, I replace the y with 0 in the inequality, and really that means I could just cover this up, so I get 2x equals 40, so that means x has to equal 20, so the point 20, 0 is my x-intercept of the second inequality. So there's my two points, line up my straight edge to connect the dots. And I'm going to label y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 40. And then my test point, 0, 0, 2 times 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 40. Yes, that is true. So, once again, points beneath the line are giving me a true statement. And I'm going to cross out or shade the false side. So, that eliminated this little triangle here. Therefore, my feasible set has to be defined by these four corner points. Oh, and they are very easily identifiable. So what I didn't leave room for is the table that we plug in the corner points. So I'll have to make one over here. Corner points. And my objective function is max p equals x plus y. So the corner points are 0, 0. This one we identified to be 20, 0. This one we could figure is 15, 10. And the last one is 20, 0. So all we have to do is add the x and y coordinates to find the values of the objective function. So if we want to maximize the daily output, 25 is the maximum value of the objective function. So Inputron should produce 15 hockey and 10 soccer games.